Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop effects project, I'll be showing you how to do this kind of Andy Warhol style effect. We'll do this one and then we'll take it another step further and create this posterization effect. Now this is completely controllable which is one of the interesting things about this particular technique. Notice that this has several layers in here and this little bit is actually done with just effects, that outline. Okay, let's see exactly how this is handled. What do we do to actually create this particular look. I'm going to pull up the original image and then let's see how we can approach that image to gain this, this effect. Right there on top. Okay, so here's the original image. Now, both of these rely on the same tool, the same adjustment. And we'll see that up here. Go up to Image Adjustments and if we scroll down a little bit this one here called threshold what this does is it converts the image to a black or white image black or white version and you can control how much that conversion is done so just click on threshold take a look at that there we go there's the threshold real basic as you can see these are all of the values in the picture these are the white values these are the dark values and here's the midpoint you take this one slider control and move it left or right to move the values to the white side or to the black side. So if I want to see more of my midtones in the white side, I'll move this to the left hand side. You can see there we can actually come in and then find a spot where we have most of our values on the left hand side. If I keep on going, what we get down is to just see just the real dark areas of the picture as black. Everything else is being converted to white. So it gives you that threshold between black and white. And that's the whole key here, is this one control. Now on our first image, let's just cancel that for a second, on our first one here, we find a nice midpoint where we have some hair showing and a little bit of the color line in here. And then we'll use that as our basis. So let's go back here again and image adjustments threshold and let's just find a nice spot where the image looks pretty good just as it is. So I'm just looking for right now for, for an image that that looks nice. It's not too light, not too dark. I want just a little bit of image in the chin area. Here we go. That's pretty good. Right in there. Now I didn't write down my number in the last one so this isn't probably exactly what I had before but if you write down your number in there, your threshold level, you can then repeat that precisely. But this is, is the effect that I want choose OK. There we go. So that is the basic effect for our first option here. From this point on, it's simply a matter of colorizing these things. If we take a look down below here, the first one there is simply that black image with a colored background. Let's take a look at that. Now we're going to be doing four of these, so I need to take this one image and either take the image itself and make it one quarter the size, or make my canvas size twice as big, you know, twice as tall, twice as wide. So we'll do it that way. Go up to Image, Canvas Size. Right now it's a pretty good size, but that's okay. I'll leave this one in the bottom left-hand corner. And let's go to Percent. And I'll put the width at 200% and the height at 200%. There we go. So it's now twice as big, twice as tall. Let's just it on screen again and I want to find my midpoint so I'm going to be pulling down these guidelines so I wait until they snap there it is snap to the midpoint and I'll pull it over here wait till it snaps to the midpoint there it is so 
there's our basic section. We now can actually take this and then clip this stuff out and colorize that back. So I'm going to double click here on the background, choose OK. I can now edit that background. So let's use the rectangular marquee tool. I'll come here. I'm just going to let it snap to the midpoint, hit the delete key, and give me transparency here. Do the same thing on the right side, hit the delete key, and that gives me transparency there. Okay, we're getting there. Let's make a copy of this layer. There we go. And I can then move that over to this position. Let's come back to this first one. Again, that's our first left here. So this is just my safety. So here's my first left position. Now we can colorize this image. Simply add color into the white area. Lots of, of ways of doing this. Easiest way up here is probably the adjustments, hue saturation. Colorize the image, and you'll see here if I move this to the left, I colorize the background. If I move it to the right, I colorize the image. So I can choose either one of those, background or image. This, we're going to be doing the background on this one. So we're around in here. I want it real saturated. There we go. So nice, nice bright saturation. And then it's simply a matter of finding the color that you want to use. I think I'll make this one kind of a mid-tone blue this time. There we go. And again, I can adjust the value in here and the saturation level to get just the effect I want. A little less saturation, I think, is, is good for this one. There we go. So again, a little different color than I chose over here. I used a, a brighter purple in this case. Same exact trick, though. Now, I want to have that white outline around this. So let's do a layer style here. Layer, layer style, stroke. Let's change the stroke to white. I'll just drag up upper left hand corner like that. I want the stroke inside. And then we'll increase the size here. And let's just take a note of that. I'll set this at 30 pixels. We can always come back and change later. But there, that gives me that inside outline. So that is our first option. The next one over here, there are a couple of approaches to this one. In this example, as you can see, I cleaned out the back. I left just the black area, and then we cleaned everything else out, and then just put a color shape behind it, which is real straightforward. Let's go over here. I'm going to grab my magic wand tool right there. Let's uncheck contiguous. It doesn't really matter what your tolerance is because it, the, the range here is so great. Just click any place in here, hit the delete key, and that simply deletes all of that white. Everything else, any gray tones you're seeing in there are simply dots of black. Okay, so we have our bottom right hand corner. Let's now, now make some copies of this one. I'll drag this down to the new layer button. And let's just snap that into place right there. Do the same thing, bring it down, pull that over and let that snap into place just like that. So there's our four images. We now need color behind each one of these images. That's again easy to do. I'll do a new layer. There we go. Grabbing the rectangular marquee tool, let's just pull a rectangular marquee, let it snap right to those guidelines. We can then fill that with whatever color we want to fill that with. Let's just choose something else in here. I think something that's in the, you know, a light range maybe, maybe an orange on this one. And then let's grab our paint bucket tool and we'll fill that. There we go. Easy enough. Let's just deselect. I want to apply that same outline on this. So we'll do it the easy way. Right click and copy layer style. Come up here, right click, paste layer style. That gives me the white outline. Notice we have a little overlap down there. If I wanted to be real picky, I can come in and I can do a selection and just clean off that, that white overlap or that black overlap on there. I actually kind of like that. I think it's kind of interesting looking, so I'm going to leave that slight overlap. It adds a little bit more interesting detail. But you could, again, just come in here and just clip that piece off on that layer. 
Now that we have a color layer set up, I'm just going to copy that layer and let's move that layer up. It has the style already applied to it. Move it up there or copy that one again. Move that over. Again, letting it snap to our guidelines. We can now just recolor these and I can either fill it with a new color or go up to image adjustments hue saturation and we can just move the hue around. The nice thing about this is I can actually see what it looks like on my image and find a coloration that I like for this. So there's that one. Let's go up here. We'll grab this one. I'm going to move this up. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to put this up directly underneath the one that it relates to so I don't get confused in here. Put that one up there so that one pairs with that. This one now pairs with this one. So let's go ahead and change the color of this. Image adjustments, hue saturation again. And let's make this one a cooler color. I think in here somewhere a little less saturation maybe. There we go. So there's the basics. Let's take a look at that overlap in here. Right there where it's overlapping onto the white. A couple ways around that. I have some space above. I could just move the picture up a little bit if I wanted to. And that's this picture right here. Or just grab your rectangular marquee. Come in here and select that area like that, hit the delete key and erase that out. So that's really easy to clean up that little detail. I'll go ahead and I'll do that since we've started. I'll go ahead and finish that off. Same thing. Just grab that and a little deletion. There we are. Let's look at our bottom right hand corner. Same trick. And that is on that one. There we go. Deselect, fit on screen. There's that basic look. Now I took this one little step further, adding a glow in here to some of these and changing the coloration of that, those actual images. We can do that as well. And I think I'm gonna move this picture here over, but I'm gonna use my cursor keys and just reposition that a little bit. It's not quite exactly where I want it. There we go. So let's do a couple of things. First, we're going to change the color of this image, this black image. Again, we're just going to be colorizing that with the image adjustments, hue saturation, colorize, and bring our lightness up. You can see there, once I bring the lightness up and the saturation up, we then have added color into that image. You can go real light if you want to, or you can go you know, medium value, whatever you like, and then simply find an interesting looking color for your variation. You can go real strange, you know, real opposites in here, or just something a little bit different. I'm going to go for a bit of a blue about like that on this. It's personal preference on what colors you use. Come down to this one, do the same trick. Image adjustments, hue saturation, colorize. Bring the lightness value up, saturation up, and then adjust the hue until we find something that's interesting for that. I think maybe over here is kind of fun. We'll play with our saturation a little bit. There we go. That one's taken care of. Come down to our bottom right corner. Same trick. Image adjustments, hue saturation colorize, bring the lightness value up until you begin to see some color happening in there. Bring your saturation up and then simply come in and play around with the hue until you find some interesting color in there. You know, maybe in the purples be kind of interesting on this, on this one down here. There we go, a little brighter. So that's the basic look. Let's just take this one step further. And let's go up to our upper left-hand corner. 
and add a slight glow in here, layer style. So layer, layer style, inner glow. You begin to see it right there. And we can just come in and just do just a slight glow. You have precise or softer, and you can do an inner glow like this, which is inside of the image. Or you can do an outer glow down here, which comes outside of the image. So these different different options. A lot of fun you, you can have in here. You can play around with these things to get different effects. And you'll find if you copy this effect, you'll need to change it slightly for each one of your images based upon the colors that you've selected. For instance, if I just right click in here, copy layer styles, come down to the upper right hand corner, right click paste layer style. It's not as apparent because the colors that we have selected. So I would need to come in here and then just adjust that, adjust those settings until we can see it. Now we're not really seeing it because our background is so light, so light in color. So maybe a brighter color. I'll pull this clear over to white. And let's bring our opacity up a lot further. Now we can begin to see that in there. So there you go. There's the basic idea. And you can just play around with the settings until you get something which you like. But pretty straightforward. And the whole thing is based upon that one adjustment here, the threshold adjustment. Okay, now that we have seen that one, let's take a look at this and see how we can go a lot further as we have on this one, on this image. So I'll bring back up the original image again. I'm going to just save this, just do a file save as and I'll make it a Photoshop file save there we go we can then get that out of the way and let's get this one out of the way let's take a look at this image I'll bring back up the original image which is right there and you'll see in this case we have several layers here's the original I have a white layer in, in behind that we'll take a look at that then I have one two, three, and four copies that we're working with of that original image. So here we go. Here's the original. Let's begin making copies. There's one copy, two copies, three copies, and four copies. I want a white layer right there. And I'll just save the background as my protection. Let's reset our colors to their defaults, put white as our foreground color, and then use the paint bucket to fill that white area. We now need to come in and do these four images. I want this to be our lightest colors and this to be our darkest colors. So we're going light to dark on these. Let's just hide these. We'll start down here, go up to image adjustments and threshold so I want this way over here to the right hand side someplace kind of like that this will be our our lights so we have you know clear or white up there and then everything else is going to be dark so I'll just do that one and then using the magic wand click into the white area hit the delete key and it gives us transparency in this case we're not seeing that because I have that white back there so just hide that white so there's our transparency okay that's our first one let's do our second one this would be more of a mid value a dark mid so again image adjustments threshold and that's pretty good just where, where it's at I'll leave it right where it's at same thing magic wand Click into the white, hit the delete key, and then deselect. Our next one we want even lighter than this. That's this one. So image adjustments, threshold. Let's move it down towards the left a bit. I want more of our image showing. Kind of like that. That's pretty good in here somewhere. 
choose OK, magic wand, same trick, delete key, deselect, and then our final layer up here is going to be the darkest parts of our image. I only want to be seeing the darkest parts of the image on this one. So image adjustments, threshold, and put way down towards the left hand side until I'm just seeing some of those dark areas. Like that. Looks pretty good. Same thing, magic wand, delete key, and deselect. So we now have four levels in here, all made with that threshold control. If you take a look at our original, you can see what we've done is I've colorized these using the color overlay on effects. The bottom one is our lightest color, kind of a yellow in here. The next one has kind of a, a tan color and then a, a medium brown and then a brown. So let's see how we're going to do that. Come down here. I'll bring back in my white background at this point. And now let's colorize this using our layer style. So layer, layer style, and color overlay. You can see what's happening in there. So on this one, actually I think I have one of my layers is still showing me. Yeah, there we go. Let me hide that. There we go. Okay, so layer, layer style, color overlay. That looks better. And you can choose your color right here. Just click on that and then choose a color. I want something that's kind of a very light color, but fairly soft. Maybe in there someplace. The nice thing about this is we can come back and we can change these colors afterwards very, very easily. So there's our first one. If I now bring in the second one, you can see how we're getting a two-tone effect. Let's make this one a little bit darker. Same trick again. Layer, layer, style, color overlay. You can see what's happening right there. And I want this one to be a little bit darker into my browns. Maybe, maybe in here somewhere. Choose OK. Let's go to our next layer. That's this one. Take this one even darker. Layer, layer style. Color overlay. Again, same trick as before. Click on the color spot and let's come back into our, our oranges here. And I'll come a little bit darker this time. Nope, went too far on that. That's pretty good. Choose OK. And then our final, which is our, our blacks up there. Let's grab this one. I want it just a little bit of a brown, not pure black. Same thing. Layer. Layer style, color overlay. Come back down into our, our same brown areas and get a little bit of a darker brown. And choose OK. And there's the posterize effect. Now I, I chose different colors than I had here. As you can see, I went a lot lighter on the skin here and darker on the hair. Now, the nice thing about this is you can come back and you can modify this at any time. Just change your color overlay to see what you want to see. So this color in here, say I wanted to have this stuff lighter, leave the hair dark but have this stuff a little bit lighter. Just double click on effects, come back to color overlay, and I can modify that color right there. So it's easy to come in and adjust this after the fact because you're working with an effect on your color style. So there we go. There's that basic posterization effect. Now let's make the background look a little more interesting. That's this bit here. And we're going to just put some layer styles on this as well. So layer, layer style. Let's come down to inner glow. I'm going to be kind of a, a, an odd or bright purplish kind of a color here on this one. One from the edge. We want the size on this. 
do it normal right there. And you see how we're getting an outline now of that color right there. If you want to make that a hard edge, just come in here and pull your choke right there all the way over. And you can get a hard edge right in there. So I should actually come in and, and bring in a hard edge. Now, if you don't want to have this stuff down here, you can just come in and then just fill in that area on that black layer so you wouldn't see that. So that allows you to get this nice little border happening, this border idea happening. I'm going to choose OK on that. So again, we're just doing a border on that. Now, this little part right down here, that's this shoulder up here on this level. So if I didn't want to have that, all I would have to do is come in here and paint in black on this layer. So let's take a look at that. Grab our brush. So adjust the brush size until I can see something. There we go. Paint black in there and I can actually get rid of that. That simply replaces it with whatever color is being used on that layer. If I wanted to get rid of something like in here, I could do that again just by painting or you are erasing the contents of that layer that will then show more of that in. Or you can even bring your opacity down and begin to show a little more as well. You can see right there it begins to show through if you adjust your opacity. So a pretty interesting effect as you can see and it's all based on those thresholds and just using that to create the posterization separation. The nice thing about this is that the posterization separa separation here is completely controllable based upon your settings on that threshold. If you're not happy with one of your layers, just do that layer again and readjust your setting to move your boundary lines. Let's take a look at the one last bit here. In this, that we actually have two colors going on in this background right there. You see we have two colors happening. Also notice that I didn't take this one quite as far as I did here. I, used, I left a lot more color in this one and less color on this one. Let's just take a look at that. That colorization effect that is done here. We have a stroke and an inner shadow happening on this particular effect. So that gives us that double edged effect in that, that two color effect. Bring the effects up. Bring our stroke in. And let's click on the stroke. And that's an inside stroke. Let's choose a different color here. I'm going to choose kind of a, a blue, maybe a little bit of a darker purple. There we go. And then adjust the size. You can see the size up there. So I can use the stroke for one of my lines and the inner glow with the choke to 100% for the second of my inner lines. It's giving me the ability to do a double line like that. So there we go. That's how you do this effect. And again, if you want to make any adjustments on your coloration, you can easily go back and do that. Just Click on your color overlay and you can change your coloration. This happens to be that light color in there. It's our lightest of our colors. Our medium color is right here. That's just kind of an orange. If I wanted to go lighter on this one, just double click. Brings back the color overlay and I can adjust my color values right here. So you can come in and move these around until you get just exactly the look that you want to have with your color value. So again, it, it's a way of doing a posterization effect and having it completely controllable because you're controlling every single step of that posterization effect. Okay, so there we go. That's how to do the posterization effect. First the Andy Warhol look and then this more advanced posterization. All using that same trick. And that's the adjustment threshold right there. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.